Sick patients on ventilators have high risk of dying and many patients um, develop ventilator induced lung injury. So in IMT on the Bella Vista we've developed a tool called the Lung Recruitment Tool which allows you as a user or, or the end user to have better knowledge of the patient's um, status. So the Lung Recruitment Tool is a tool that defines the patient's potential to recruit and that's the key word. How much potential will they recruit? Some patients will recruit that means the lungs open up, recruitment is to open up, and sometimes patients, um, they either do badly or they do good. So we do this manoeuvre very early. So this tool allows us to maybe in the first, one day, the first day of treatment that we assess the patient early to avoid ventilator-induced lung injury. So we're talking about enough pressure to make the, the lungs inflate with the, what we call the minimal volume, so we can avoid volume trauma, but we also need PEEP as well to stop the lung from collapsing. So the lung recruitment tool is a very unique tool and, um, and, and on the Bella Vista really helps the end users do a much better job. Very, very easy. The patients need to be stabilised, number one. Number two, their blood pressure has to be good. All the risks have to be removed. And more importantly, because we have to pressurise the lung, the endotracheal tube cuff has to be overinflated to avoid leak. If we can do that, these manoeuvres are quite safe. So the patients we're looking at are patients who are at high risk of, for example, early ARDS, patients at risk of, of ventilator damage. And so the tool itself is very, very fast at doing this. We have a tool like this that takes us through this. And so the tool itself is very straightforward. We, we can make some settings over here in the, in, in, the, in the recruitment part, but recruitment is the assessment of the patient's ability to, re, to recruit. And normally we start from the current PEEP to see is the, is the current PEEP enough, or if it's a new patient, maybe we should be starting from ZEEP, seeing if the lungs collapse, will they inflate? And most people would normally use between, say, 35 and 40 centimetres of water to pressurise the lung, we would normally try initially keeping the inflation rate say about three centimetres per second. That means we pressurise the lung by rate of pressure change, not by rate of flow. And we do either, basically we're doing an inflation manoeuvre and deflation manoeuvre. So we want to see, is there a difference between the inflation curve and the deflation curve? Patients who have a larger um, change are what we call hysteresis, and these patients normally respond very well to recruitment and to a higher PEEP, where patients who have a lower uh, potential of recruitment, for an example, those with bad pneumonias or you know, really bad lung disease, we would um, not respond so well. So, but the tool allows us to do this. So to use our lung recruitment tool, it's very, very straightforward. We only have, you can say, five adjustments to make for the assessment. These are single manoeuvres, so this is not continuous. Firstly is our current PEEP, so this can either be ZEEP, no PEEP, on a new patient, or the current PEEP, we make the setting there. We have the pressure we want to go to, which is number three over here. Most people would use between, say, 35 to 40 as the initial assessment. These tend to be quite normal numbers. Some people might need a bit higher, but these on most patients with early disease should be enough. The slope is how fast we inflate the lung. So on an assessment manoeuvre, we would normally say three centimetres of water per second, but for a recruitment manoeuvre, about five centimetres per second is, an, is about right. The pause is the easy part. This is where we hold the breath in for a manoeuvre. So for the assessment, it's zero, but as a recruitment manoeuvre would be about maybe 10 seconds to 10 to 20 seconds depending on the patient. And the last part, which is the PEEP level, this is the new PEEP level we believe the patient should need after the recruitment manoeuvre. So, to, to look at lung recruitment, what we have to do is define how much pressure we need to achieve and how fast the ventilator will ramp the pressure up and the pressure back. So this current one, what we'll do, we'll start at from ZEEP, 
zero pressure. The ramp speed or the slope is three centimeters per second. The example we use now is 35 centimeters of water. And you can see over here, we're gonna have no pause or no end peep. So we're gonna go from zero to 35 back to zero. What we're seeing here very simply is a, what we call a, a quasi-static pressure volume curve. The patient's been sedated, paralyzed, can't breathe. We're starting from zero. The lung has been pressurized. You can see from this point over here, we apply pressure, there's no volume. That means the lung has collapsed. And above, for example, over here, about eight centimeters, we start to see the, the lung regions begin to open up. As we apply pressure, proportionally there's more volume. So we have an inflation curve that's almost linear. So this part of the curve is recruitment. As we inflate the lung, we get more volume, which is when we measure volume here, this is pressure here. We can start to see now, as the lung is fully distended, that we have a bird's, a bird's beak, which means the chest wall is being overpressurized. The ventilator now releases the pressure slowly at the same amount of pressure being reduced. And what's interesting over here is we see now, on this side over here, as it's being reduced slowly, we see a pressure difference. Well, actually a volume difference, which is what we call hysteresis. So we see for the same amount of pressure, a volume difference. And based on that, we can, once we've come back to the situation, we can assess the patient's ability for how much the lung opening pressure is over here. So you can see the difference between inflation and deflation. And we can start to work our way through here, for an example, on here somewhere, where we have maximum hysteresis, what we call delta volume. And the delta volume is a very good indicator of what point, how much PEEP the patient should require. So now we have a patient who's got good potential to recruit, and we need to measure something, for an example, how much volume we can recruit. So the best way of doing it is keeping the existing settings initially to figure it out. We're going to the same amount of pressure, but now we'll make two changes. Because the first was an assessment, now we can be a lot more um, faster at getting a good result. So what we will do is two things. We'll add a pause on, and the pause is an inflation, at the, a hold maneuver at the very top. How much we'll hold the lung open for. So there's no real magic number, but most people say about 10 to 20 seconds. Personally, I think 10 seconds should be enough for most patients, but some patients may require more pressure and more time. We can be also with the inflation maneuver, we can actually inflate much faster because the first was assessment. So over here now we can say we will go at five centimeters per second to speed things up. And these two settings would be acceptable. So now we want to see, is this patient going to recruit? And we'll do this um, in a nice way. We're going to do the same again. And we say we're ready to go now. Okay, the lung is relaxing. And you can see clearly coming up again. So we inflate the lung up to the same amount of pressure. You can see the volume is now coming up. Okay. The lung is now got more volume. We're now letting the lung relax again, down to the same amount of pressure, back to, to the same amount of seep. And we end up now with a very, very nice recruitment. And what we can see over here, very importantly, is when we move the cursor to here, we can see two important things. We can see the total volume of the lung, number one. But two, we can see how much additional volume there is at the very top. So a, a recruiting patient will, will actually have more volume, but more importantly, you can see over here that as the lung is opened up, we now see that the patient will respond to PEEP because they have much higher end expiratory volume. So we can now move our cursors over here and try and find the magic point. And over here, a good example would be over here where the patient over here could have about 14 of PEEP, because they have sick lungs, we can see that the volume of PEEP, we can see the volume of recruitment, and we now know how to provide safe ventilation. So here would be our, our PEEP target. We now know how much tidal volume would be safe. It, it doesn't matter the mode of ventilation, but we, the manoeuvre helps us do this. 
So our patient requires, for an example, forting of the PEEP. So our manoeuvre now will be one more recruitment manoeuvre and the PEEP we need. So the example over here, we're going to keep the same settings, but now we will define the PEEP level we need and we can just come up. So we think it's 14. That means the manoeuvre will start from ZEEP up to 35 of pressure, 10 second hold, and the pressure will be dropped back to 40 of PEEP. So our new PEEP will be how we ventilate going forward. So we're ready to go. The manoeuvre's patient is stable, and off we go again. And you see what happens now. The lung is being pressurised again. Nicely coming up again. Get to our maximum pressure. There's still recruitment going on. You can see the volume is coming up. And all of a sudden, the, the pressure will be dropped down by the ventilator. And you can see it's coming back down nicely again. And what we see now is something very different. So now we move the cursor across to here. Keep the cursor over here where it was before. And we can see now the patient has a new peep, which is over here. But more importantly, we can actually also show too the volume of PEEP, which we call the end expiratory lung volume. So now we have optimal PEEP post-recruitment. And now my next thing would be adjusting the ventilator to keep the tidal volume much smaller. But with a much higher PEEP, we can oxidate much better.